Unity screwed up with its new installation fee charging 20 cents per install. Of course, the community reacted badly to this change and YouTube was full of people talking about this problematic. Some people is even considering to change the game engine they use. And that thought led me to create this video in which I'll be showing you how you can easily migrate to Goodjot from Unity. In this quick guide, I will introduce you to Goodjot's UI and its workflow by creating a simple game prototype. And now, let's start. So let's firstly start with the most basic stuff, which is downloading the engine. You will realize that it's actually very simple, even easier than in Unity. So we're gonna go to the download section right here, and you will click here with Jot Engine 411. And yeah, that's all. So here we have the compressed file, which as you could see was downloaded in just a couple of seconds. So we're gonna open this. And well, we can see here two main files. This one, which is a uh, heavier, is the executable, and this one is the console, okay? So, what we are gonna be doing here is that uh, we are gonna extract our files right here. And well, as you can see here, again, we have the executable and the console. So, we just have to open the executable. And as you can see, in just a couple of seconds, in less than a minute, we can start using Goodjot. So here the interface is very very simple. We can create a new game right here or we can import an existing project and we can change the language here and we even have an asset library uh, where we can download some pre-made uh, projects. But well, uh, let's firstly create a new project here you can give it a name uh, you can also select the project path and uh, the renderer okay so i'm gonna click here create an edit so uh, firstly here the interface again is super easy to understand we have our file system our scene window our inspector which is exactly the same one that we have in unity and we have the 2d 3d and the script okay Another thing that's very important is that we have some versions with C Sharp support, the programming language from Unity. But well, it's pro, it's an um, installation process. It's a little bit uh, more complicated. But well, it's also a great option if you wanna migrate your programming skills with C Sharp in Unity to Goodjot. But well, in this case, we're gonna be using the default, let's say, programming language in Goodjot which is very similar to Python. So the first thing we're gonna be doing here is very simple. We have the nodes here, uh, which are like the game objects that we have in Goodjot and in Unity. But uh, the thing with this node is that each node um, is used for something in specific. I mean, for example, in Unity, we may have some empty game objects and right there we would add in the same game object the collision, um, the rigid body, etc. But in Goodjot, it's very, very different. Because, for example, if, you, if we want to create a character, we would use the character body node, okay, which is used um, to move things for example it's just to create some characters and then as a separate component let's say we could have here our collision shape which is exactly the same thing that we have in unity okay and also we can have here our sprite okay as you can see here we have our sprite so as you can see here, the workflow and the hierarchy system are quite different. In Unity, everything is like in the same game object, but here everything is separated. Okay, but anyway, with this button right here, you can create a new scene and we're gonna delete this one. Um, so firstly, what we're gonna be doing here 
it's just like a score counter like a clicker game so we want to use this node here user interface it's more like a canvas let's say but we actually have a canvas layer as you can see so uh, we want to create there the canvas and then uh, right here I'm gonna add firstly uh, a button okay and well other dif difference that we have with unity is that here we have the text inside the button so here if I put plus one one plus okay as you can see the text is inside our button game game object our node and um, actually we could add here a label which is the node used to display text as you can see we could yes of course that we could but well we have the built-in function that by default we have the text inside our button so uh, let's firstly resize this button a little bit then using here the anchors we're gonna move it down and then using the w again the same shortcut that we have in unity we're gonna move it up a little bit maybe like this once we have our button right here um i want to create inside my canvas layer um a label which i told you is like the text okay uh, we're gonna write here zero because because it's gonna be my score counter text i'm gonna center it okay then here we have the horizontal alignment and the vertical alignment here in the theme overrides we can change the font size so we're gonna put maybe 20 no more a uh, hundred okay that, maybe that's a little bit too much but anyway let's move it a little bit now there it's okay just that we should resize here the button maybe a little bit like this and like this okay then we move it up again a little bit oh and here we should also um overwrite the font size the default font size and i'm gonna give it like um maybe like this 60 yeah there should be okay okay so here basically all the user interface we have it done i believe so i'm gonna rename this canvas layer uh, to main okay and i'm gonna save it with Control s and there we have our main scene something very important here in Godot is that we have two buttons to actually play our game firstly we can just run it but then with this button we can play the current scene we can run the current scene and you may be thinking what is the difference between these two um, buttons well when you run the current scene you just run the current scene that you have selected okay so here as you can see it is my main scene but for example if i had here some other um, scene for example i'm gonna create a sprite with an icon and i play it firstly i have to save it of course as you can see i play the current scene okay and this is the same option that we have in unity as you know when you click the play button in unity you play the current scene okay but what is important here is that we actually run our project here we will have this pop-up no main scene has ever been defined select one you can change it later in project settings so what is the main scene the main scene is basically the first scene that will be run as soon as we start playing something very similar or literally the same exact thing that we have in unity uh, if we go to the scenes and we uh, set our scene to be the index zero okay the first scene that will be launched so in this case this is my main scene so i want this scene to be my main one so i'm gonna select it and as you can see i have here my ui 
So I'm going to create a script here. And when you want to attach a script, firstly, you don't have to go like here to the file system, click new script and all that stuff. Well, you could actually, but the most used way of doing that is selecting the node to which you want to attach the script. You can select here the language as I told you, well, I have installed the default version, so I don't have access to C sharp. The inherits, it's basically um, the type of node, so it's okay because it's a canvas layer. We also have the template, which we have the node default, which has, as you can see, uh, some default good dot cycle methods, or we have just the empty um, template. So I'm going to create this uh, empty script. As you can see, I have here the extents that I was talking about. So here, uh, to define a function, you use the keyword func, whereas in Unity, uh, you wouldn't do it like this. So in this case, we have two built-in functions that are very used. Of course, we have a lot of other functions that are bit built in and we use a lot. But well, first we have the uh, ready function that is basically the start function, which is called at the beginning of our game. So here we could print the message and we also have the process delta, but we're going to be talking about that later. So I'm going to play and as you can see, ready is printed. I'm receiving this warning because the parameter delta is never used in the function process if this is intended prefix it with an underscore like this okay so that's the ready function and the process delta it's the exact same thing that that it is in unity so we could just print here something and when we play it as you can see it's being printed a bunch of times so let's start now creating our game logic that well it's gonna be very very easy so i'm gonna connect um the pressed signal of my node to my main um script as you can see well it was a little bit different from unity because well we have here the signals that as you can see we have a bunch of fun of signals that we can connect that actually we are gonna be connecting so that you can understand how they work but they work uh, in a very similar way that they do in unity so button press is basically when we press the button and the same thing happened with the other one so i'm just gonna be printing messages when these functions are called like this okay so as you can see when I just click and release, firstly, it detects that the button was down. It means that it was held down. Then that it was pressed and then that I release the click. So if I hold here the click, as you can see, it says button down. When I release, it detects the pressed and the button up is also called. We have here inside our button, the action mode that as you can see, the pressed signal was called when i released the button but we could actually do it to be called when we press the button that means that when i uh, click and it doesn't matter if i release it's called here the pressed okay but when i release the mouse as you can see it's called the button up so when we press our button what we're gonna be doing here is firstly we're gonna create a variable to create a variable here, you just say bar, then the variable node, and you don't have to write the type of variable, okay? Of course, you could do it by saying this, but it's not mandatory, okay? So here, I'm just going to be increasing my score by one, score plus equal one, that's the exact same thing. And then after increasing our variable, we want to set its value to our score counter text. So in order to call it, we use the money symbol and we just call it. OK, that's very nice in good out because you don't have to create here a variable of reference and nothing like that. Of course, you can create here a reference variable, but this is a much simpler way to do it. And we want to modify its text. Um, to be 
score. But we actually need to convert this score, which is an integer, to a string. So we just do like this. Here also, uh, we have to set this variable initially to zero. And now, okay, when we start playing, as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, etc. And we have all of our signals also. So here is something very simple that we could implement just to, let's say, finish our game. And that is if at the moment that we press our button, our score is equal to 10 we are just gonna um, quit our application so and this is no actually i'm just gonna be printing to make it even simpler print win okay so uh, let's play one two th three four five six seven eight nine ten and as you can see here we have the win message Okay, so I hope now with this video you have a better understanding of Goodjot and how you can migrate from Unity. In this specific video, I focused on the workflow and how to create this very basic stuff by using only GD script, okay? But as I told you, you can also use C Sharp. So if you want a second part of this course, creating something very similar or whatever, but using C Sharp, uh, let me that idea in the comments and leave your like and subscription as well so i know that you are actually interested in watching that video this is all for today's video see you in the next one and bye bye